Moving on to markets now, and red meat exports were on a record pace through the third quarter of 2021, and the last couple of weeks have seen cattle prices jumping up around $5 per hundred weight. Joining me this week to discuss these topics and more is Briggs Feed Yard owner and operator Mike Briggs. Mike, thanks for joining us this week. Great to be here, thanks. And starting things off, when most people look at any market, they will question what does the market need to accomplish over the next year? As we're heading into the tail end of 2021, what are some expectations you have for how the year will close out and what needs to happen as we head into 2022? Well, we're in a serious stage of liquidation here on the production end because prices have been so low now for the last two and a half years, ever since the plant fire in Tyson in 2019, that basically people are gonna have to downsize. You've got a lot, and you had a drought last year, so you've got the cow-calf sector, they're liquidating, they're, they're selling cows and bulls and liquidating, so you're gonna have a smaller pool of cattle as we go forward to feed, so that's gonna make competition to keep your feed yard full hard, and yet in the feed yard industry, because the packer have such a chokehold on this industry, they're making so much money that we're not, so it's hard for us to pay down to the rancher, it's hard for us to afford to feed our cattle, so this whole thing is going to be really kind of a struggle now because we've transitioned from an oversupply of cattle, we're transitioning to a smaller supply of cattle. Now Mike, last month's cattle on feed report showed fewer placements in feedlots. What should producers be looking for in the upcoming cattle on feed report? That'll be really interesting because that was unexpected to have lower placements on the last report. So are we going to, are we going to start a trend? Um, you know, placements during October are usually your lar- some of your largest of the year, October and January. So it's going to be interesting to see. Are we, are we just starting to see a trend where placements aren't so big? I don't know, but this can be the start of a trend. You have to have more than about two or three cattle on feed reports to establish a trend, but I think that's very possible because you saw early placements of cattle off drought. Now you see your standard placements in October. You know, what are they going to be? Now we've been able to fill up, but I know a lot of people have not. So it's going to be interesting to see. And of course, over the last couple of weeks, cattle prices were seen jumping roughly $5 per hundred weight. In your opinion, what was the driving force behind those price movements? Well, that's something that's been needed for quite a while. We finally got to maybe where you have a little profitability in this industry now because prices have escalated a little bit to where we can get something done. Um, what forced that? We finally got through all these cattle, all the cattle that got backed up during COVID, all the cattle that got backed up because they said they didn't have enough employees or something broke down or whatever excuse they wanted to use not to slaughter to capacity. Um, profits for packers are still in the 600 to $800 range. They're making astronomical amounts of money. So they've got a lot of incentive to process cattle demand you know beef's kind of turned into a celebration holiday kind of thing where you used to kind of see demand kind of tail off into the end of the year well, over the last so many years now beef demand going into the holidays has been very good and it's very good again so they've got good demand they've got a lot of upfront sales so they need to buy cattle and process so i think the feed yard is in a pretty good seat to maybe claw back some of their profits now do i think we're really going sky high no, I do not, but at least we're not continually getting beaten in the head like a baby seal. And looking at recent numbers, red meat exports were pushing record pace through the third quarter of 2021, looking to be on track to top $2 billion in sales to places like Japan, South Korea, and China. How have those numbers been looking as we near the halfway point of the fourth quarter in the fiscal year? They've been fantastic. Now, we've seen a little bit of a slowdown here because meat got so high. Um, I think hopefully you will see a little bit more as we go on. You know, the value of the dollar has a lot to do with that. If the dollar starts increasing in value because they raise interest rates, that's gonna choke off exports a little bit. I don't even know about the mess at the ports. That's not helping us either. So there's a lot of hurdles getting thrown in the way of the beef exports. But from a demand standpoint, I think the demand is there if they can just get over the hurdles that they need. I don't know what the monetary system is going to do. Are we going to stay level on interest rates? Are we going to increase them? If we do things to make our exports more expensive, that's going to curtail exports. But I think right now we're doing really well. 
uh, then there's also the political pressure and the headbutting between us and China because they have become so big in that particular in the export market that could cause problems also. So it's a little murky in my mind. And before we wrap things up today, Mike, uh, do you have any marketing or risk management strategies that you'd like to share with our viewers? Well, I think we're going to continue slowly towards reduced supply. So I think this market has the potential to continue to grind higher. Having said that, a lot of cattle, fat cattle for the market in January, February, historically our worst demand months of the year. So that's not good. I think you're probably gonna see this thing kind of go up towards the end of the year and then it's gonna be like a leaky balloon for a while. Then once, you know, sun comes out and you get a little hint of spring and maybe somebody wants to drag the grill out of the garage, then I think we make another nice run. But January and February could definitely be a struggle. And there you have it, folks. Mike Briggs of Briggs Feedyard. Mike, thank you so much for joining us this week. Thank you.